Chapter 7 My First Vision It was not long after the passing of the time in 1844 that my first vision was given me. I was visiting a dear sister in Christ whose heart was knit with mine. Five of us, all women, were kneeling quietly at the family altar. While we were praying, the power of God came upon me as I had never felt it before. I seemed to be surrounded with light and to be rising higher and higher from the earth. I turned to look for the Advent people in the world but could not find them when a voice said to me, Look again and look a little higher. At this I raised my eyes and saw a straight and narrow path cast high above the world. On this path the Advent people were traveling toward the city. Behind them, at the beginning of the path, was a bright light which an angel told me was the midnight cry. This light shone all along the path that their feet might not stumble. Jesus himself went just before his people to lead them forward, and as long as they kept their eyes fixed on him, they were safe. But soon some grew weary and said the city was a great way off, and they expected to have entered it before. Then Jesus would encourage them by raising his glorious right arm, from which came a light that waved over the Advent band, and they shouted, Alleluia! Others rashly denied the light behind them and said it was not God that had led them out so far. The light behind them went out, leaving their feet in perfect darkness, and they stumbled and lost sight of the mark and of Jesus, and fell off the path down into the dark and wicked world below. Soon we heard the voice of God like many waters, which gave us the day and the hour of Jesus' coming. The living saints, 144,000 in number, knew and understood the voice, while the wicked thought it was thunder and an earthquake. When God spake the time, he poured upon us the Holy Spirit, and our faces began to light up and shine with the glory of God, as Moses' did when he came down from Mount Sinai. The 144,000 were all sealed and perfectly united. On their foreheads were the words, God, New Jerusalem, and a glorious star containing Jesus' new name. At our happy, holy state, the wicked were enraged and would rush violently up to lay hands on us to thrust us into prison, when we would stretch forth the hand in the name of the Lord, and they would fall helpless to the ground. Then it was that the synagogue of Satan knew that God had loved us, who could wash one another's feet and salute the brethren with a holy kiss, and they worshipped at our feet. Soon our eyes were drawn to the east, for a small black cloud had appeared, about half as large as a man's hand, which we all knew was the sign of the Son of Man. In solemn silence we all gazed on the cloud as it drew nearer and became lighter, glorious and still more glorious, till it was a great white cloud. The bottom appeared like fire. A rainbow was over the cloud, while around it were ten thousand angels singing a most lovely song, and upon it sat the Son of Man. His hair was white and curly and lay on his shoulders, and upon his head were many crowns. His feet had the appearance of fire. In his right hand was a sharp sickle, in his left a silver trumpet. His eyes were as a flame of fire which searched his children through and through. Then all faces gathered paleness, and those that God had rejected gathered blackness. Then we all cried out, Who shall be able to stand? Is my robe spotless? The angels ceased to sing, and there was a time of awful silence when Jesus spoke. Those who have clean hands and pure hearts shall be able to stand. My grace is sufficient for you. 
At this our faces lighted up, and joy filled every heart, and the angel struck a note higher and sang again while the cloud drew still nearer the earth. Then Jesus' silver trumpet sounded as he descended on the cloud wrapped in flames of fire. He gazed on the graves of the sleeping saints, then raised his eyes and hands to heaven and cried, Awake, 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 ye that sleep in the dust, and arise. Then there was a mighty earthquake. The graves opened and the dead came up clothed with immortality. The 144,000 shouted, Alleluia, as they recognized their friends who had been torn from them by death. And in the same moment, we were changed and caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. We all entered the cloud together and were seven days ascending to the sea of glass when Jesus brought the crowns and with his own right hand placed them on our heads. He gave us harps of gold and palms of victory. Here on the sea of glass, the 144,000 stood in a perfect square. Some had very bright crowns, others not so bright. Some crowns appeared heavy with stars, while others had but few. All were perfectly satisfied with their crowns, and they were all clothed with a glorious white mantle from their shoulders to their feet. Angels were all about us as we marched over the sea of glass to the gate of the city. Jesus raised his mighty, glorious arm, laid hold of the pearly gate, swung it back on its glittering hinges, and said to us, You have washed your robes in my blood, stood stiffly for my truth, enter in. We all marched in and felt we had a perfect right there. Within the city we saw the tree of life and the throne of God. Out of the throne came a pure river of water, and on either side of the river was the tree of life. On one side of the river was a trunk of a tree, and a trunk on the other side of the river, both of pure transparent gold. At first I thought I saw two trees. I looked again and saw that they were united at the top in one tree. So it was the tree of life on either side of the river of life. Its branches bowed to the place where we stood, and the fruit was glorious, which looked like gold mixed with silver. We all went under the tree and sat down to look at the glory of the place, when brethren Fitch and Stockman who had preached the gospel of the kingdom and whom God had laid in the grave to save them, came up to us and asked us what we had passed through while they were sleeping. We tried to call up our greatest trials, but they looked so small compared with the far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory that surrounded us that we could not speak them out. And we all cried out, Alleluia! Heaven is cheap enough! and we touched our golden harps and made heaven's arches ring.